This entitled mum is about to do something incredibly strange. She's about to feed her own children some stranger's food. But she's bit off more than she can chew, and it's the stranger who ends up getting the last laugh. Happy birthday, today's your birthday, on with the revamp show. This was a few days ago, and I still think she is crazy. As a backstory, my mother has this friend who is very anti-video games, let's call her EM, and has a son who I'm friends with, NK. Growing up, she would just invite her son to eat dinner with us, without even telling us. NK would just show up. To be fair, he would usually text me, giving me heads up, that his mum is just too lazy to make him dinner, so he's been told to come over. I thought that was very entitled and strange, but my mother doesn't seem too busy. Anyway, back to the story. My mother had some coupons for pizza, so she told me I could order some pizza for lunch and have a friend over to play video games or something while she goes to work. By the way, the virus has sort of flatlined in Hong Kong, so that is why we can see each other and leave the house. That is exactly what I do. I order pizza and my friend comes over to play competitive CSGO with me on our laptops while we ate. When playing competitive CSGO, you get banned from playing competitive matches for a certain amount of time. This will be important later. Then, suddenly, I hear a knock on the door. Apparently, somehow, EM found out I was getting pizza and playing video games with a friend. Knowing that we were playing video games, I'm still not sure why she would get him to come over. Anyway, he just shows up and I let him inside. He explained his mother found out I was getting pizza and playing CSGO with my friend. I didn't want to turn him away, so I let him eat some pizza with us. Not to be rude, we talked to him in between games. After an hour, he leaves, and I don't give it another thought. After maybe 20 minutes, I get a call on my phone. At first I ignore it and it rings again, and again, until I check who it is. My heart sank when I saw the caller ID. Then she sent me a very angry text. Call me now. Thinking it could be very serious, picks up the phone. Excuse me, why did you ignore my son when he came over for your play date? Um... He said you were playing your stupid video games. Uh, sorry, I didn't know your son was coming, so I started a competitive map. Then you pause it and talk to him. He walked for 15 minutes to get to your apartment. What's wrong with you? It's a two minute walk. I'm sorry, I can't pause. What do you mean you can't pause a game to talk to my son? Don't tell me you can't pause a game. I played Pac-Man before and I can pause. Don't lie to me. It's an online game with other people and my friends including a friend that came up to the house to- I know that, but you know my son was going to come for your playdate. I don't understand what you want me to do. Nobody ever invited him. You just got him to show up. Yes, but you must pause your game. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to leave a game just to play with your son. By leaving the game, I give an unfair disadvantage to my friends on my team and an unfair advantage for the other team. This was no use. I honestly think it would be easier to teach calculus to a plant and for that plant to end up going to Harvard or something. This crazy person had an extremely thick skull. You know that's what the corporate man wants you to think. Video games are not your life. Your parents did a really bad job raising you. You need to have some manners. Who do you think you're talking to? You know what? Give me your laptop. I need to teach you some manners. I hang up. I really didn't know what she wants me to do. Her logic is, Oh, I invited my son to your house and I want you to drop everything and play with him. I think we've all been there playing an online game when either a parent or a relative comes in and is like, Pause your game! And you're like, I can't, it's online. And they just refuse to understand. <laughs> it's like, I can't do that. This happened a little more than an hour ago. EM is my flatmate's sister. She stopped by to pick up some things their parents had left here and brought her five-year-old with her. There was fried chicken resting on the countertop that I was preparing for lunch. And without thinking or asking anyone if she would have any, she took a piece and fed it to her child. This was a huge freaking mistake. I'm a pepperhead, and this batch of fried chicken was designed to be a struggle for me. The marinade had ghost pepper sauce in it, the flour and breadcrumbs were loaded with cayenne pepper and chili powder, and the oil sauce was made with more of the ghost pepper sauce. Absolute freaking madness. 
I'm upstairs trying to avoid EM. She'd be unpleasant company even when comatose. When I hear all heck break loose down below, the kid in absolute agony, crying at the top of her lungs, and EM screaming her head off. I pop down to see what the heck is going on. Flatmate is trying to relieve the kid with ice cubes and milk, while EM is letting loose about how he hurt her baby. I asked what happened. EM says, kid climbed up and got the chicken and starts berating us about how dangerous it was to leave spicy food around small kids. Flatmate calls her bullcrap and says there is no way the kid got up there. Chicken was all the way at the back. After denying it, she eventually slips and says something like, how I was supposed to know. We press her on why she thought she could just go and take food that didn't belong to her and give it to her kid. She's got no idea what's in it, etc. And starts into some hysteric crying and screaming routine, calling flatmate irresponsible, accusing us of child abuse. We've ruined her day when she just wanted to see her brother. People are going to think she hits her kid. Wouldn't surprise me. She was doing us a favor picking up the stuff her parents left. She wasn't, it was her old stuff. And then proceeds to throw the box against the wall. By this point, she's so out of control, she actually got snot coming out of her nose. She takes the ice and milk off the kid, who is still in complete agony, and storms off to the car, dragging the poor kid along with her. It was an interesting afternoon. Five out of seven chicken though. Hey, you never mess with a person's deep fried chicken, that's some serious stuff there. Looks like the kid and the parent had everything coming to them. I mean, who eats somebody else's food without asking first anyway? That is just rude. This is a story I haven't gotten to tell anywhere else, and it definitely fits this sub, so here it goes. I'm aware this post probably sounds like a Tumblr, and then everybody clapped story, but unfortunately it is very real, and it does happen to autistic folks. Also, unfortunately, nobody clapped. My family are regular customers at a local Mexican restaurant. I'm autistic and very sensitive to noise and chaotic environments, so we usually try and sit outside on the patio where it's quieter. The restaurant recently put in a grassy lawn with play equipment for the kids, and it's the bane of our existence. It's pretty common for groups of sucker mums to sit around and drink while their kids run around and wreak havoc on the diners outside. Drinks spilled, waiters tripped, kids injured by strangers kids. We've seen several families asked to leave because of their kids destructive behavior. This particular night, there was one very large table of two families eating right next to us. They had at least six kids between them, all below the age of 10. These kids were crazy loud, running wild and screaming next to where people were trying to eat while their parents, who had long since finished dinner, sat at the table and drank. There was this one boy, maybe seven or eight, who was just out of control. I was already on edge from the large amount of yelling children, but this kid stood about three feet from our table and shrieked at the top of his lungs for his sister or something along those lines. He did this for about two full minutes, which is a long time for someone with hypersensitive hearing. It's so bad that the other tables on the other side of the patio are turning to look. His parents either didn't notice or didn't care. He then runs off yelling and chasing another kid, both of them screaming. He comes back and continues to yell right next to our table for several minutes. He had also brought his orange football with him and started throwing it to his dad, who was sitting at the table next to us. At one point, the football almost hit me in the head. This prompted my grandmother, who has no filter and isn't averse to picking fights in public, to say to the dad, That football better not hit any of my grandkids! My two younger siblings and mother were also present. Enter Entitled Mum. The mum complete with Karen haircut, Lauren James shirt and get me a manager sunglasses, turns around and rolls her eyes and says, It's just a foam football, get over it! At this point I'm barely holding on from the extreme sensory overload. For those who don't know what that feels like, I'll explain because it's important. When there's too much sensory input for my brain to process, that is to say, kids running and screaming, the smell of lots of mixed foods, lots of loud conversations, all going on at once, my brain goes into overdrive. This looks and feels slightly different for everyone with autism, but for me, it manifests as a stabbing pain behind my eyes, dizziness, and hyperventilation. Sometimes I also have angry spells as a response to too much stimuli. Back to Entitled Mum. Because I'm so overloaded, 
and can barely keep from crying. Much of this caused by her goblin child, all I can do is glare at EM. EM glares right back at me and says, What's your problem? My grandmother, sensing trouble, jumps in with the, She has autism and this is just too much for her. EM responds with, My kid isn't doing anything. He's just playing catch with his dad. Keep in mind we're in a restaurant and this game is going on literally over our heads. At this point, all the input is too much for me. So I say to EM as calmly as I can, I'm sorry, but your son has been standing next to our table, screaming and throwing things next to my head. It's just a little much. Here's where the ableism kicks in and EM goes off the rails. He's a kid. Get over yourself. Why didn't you say anything before if it was that bad? I'm saying something now and you're not listening. EM then attempts to downplay her ableism by telling us that I teach special ed, so I get it, but you're being ridiculous. My bullcrap meter goes through the roof and I'm trying not to melt down. If you teach special ed, you should know that I'm serious and having a lot of trouble right now. She continues to argue with me and tell me that her son is just being a kid and I'm an adult and need to calm down. I try to calmly tell her that when a disabled person is asking you to adjust your behavior, it's because it's hurting them. You need to listen instead of getting defensive. Maybe I can turn this into a teaching moment instead of an argument. No such luck. She continues to shut me down with her insistence of, I teach special ed, because her spending a few hours a week with a couple of autistic kids discounts my lifelong experience as an autistic adult. The whole time, her darn kid is still yelling and wreaking havoc. My family up to this point has been completely silent and letting me stand up for myself because they know it's important to me, but they're starting to get upset. Set. My mom is ushering my siblings to pack up and leave, and my grandmother is calling over the manager. She finally sends me out to her car to calm down, because now I'm really close to meltdown point. I'm not sure what exactly happened after that, because I was waiting in the car crying it out, but I do know that I never got to eat anything, and that the manager apparently gave us our meal free. Apparently as a gesture, we are regular customers and so the staff is aware of my needs and was apparently mortified. I don't know what it is about entitled parents and discounting disabled folks so their kids can be brats, but yeah. Now I have trouble eating at a restaurant I used to love. Thanks, EM. If a restaurant has a play area for the kids, you know, that's not all that bad because it's better than running in between the tables and everything, right? But if you have some sort of foam football, like first of all, why did you bring that to a restaurant? But secondly, how can you think it's appropriate to throw it over other customers' heads? If you've seen my posts before, you would understand that I'm autistic. I'm high functioning, meaning I can act in public like a regular person, but I cannot handle certain things like hugging, touching, loud noises or other things of that sort. To begin, let's talk about my family. I have an aunt who has two kids. One child is similar to their father, while the second child has some issues. Not to say it's bad, but it gets stressful at times. My aunt divorced her jerk of a husband and is currently fighting for her kids. While she is doing this, she is simultaneously dating entitled uncle and raising his EK. EK has issues with touching and getting in my personal bubble, making me stressed out. I've never noticed that EU has had issues with me until December in 2019. On the 5th of December, my aunt's youngest child had his birthday party and I had to go. This party took place at EU's family home and I already couldn't handle it. I've never met his family and yet they knew my name and my interests let alone they talk down to me like I'm some sort of mentally ill person. The house was small and full of 20 people, including my mum and I. Halfway through the party, EK tried to hug me and I kept fighting to push him away with my hand. I eventually told my mother I had to go wait in the car because I'm having a meltdown. So I just left the party, which I guess ticked off EU, according to my aunt. The second time I realized that he does not like me is when, in January, I went to Chuck E. Cheese for EK's party. Kid turned 9 and wanted to have it there. 
so I had to go and spend more time in a more crowded area. And the EK kept trying to hug and poke me whenever he had the chance. To make a long story short, I left that place with a big unicorn and some stress. The final time was at my aunt's oldest child's party, back in February. I turned 17 three days before and wanted to spend some time with my friends, but one of my friends is roommates with meth heads, while the others were too busy to take one day out of their high school lives to hang out and play laser tag. So I ended up spending that weekend at my cousin's party again, at Chuck E. Cheese. This time I came with a crap ton of money and a big portable charger for my phone. I spent the first half of the party racking up some high scores until it was time to wish my cousin a happy birthday. My EU's family came again and they still tried to make small talk with me. Some talked behind my back while little kids were running around me screaming. Have you ever had the feeling where you are so stressed that the only thing to do is just sit and watch as the world you can see starts to fade to black? Well, that happened to me. My stepdad noticed I was breaking down and alerted my mum, who took me away from the situation as I was on the verge of freaking out. While she took me away, I saw that EU was glaring at my mother. When I calmed down, I came back to only be greeted to EU. I realized that for the last two times I had run-ins with this guy. I should have not added the times I realized he didn't like me. Because I didn't. What he said to me on that day ticked me off and I couldn't take it. He told me that I need to man up and stop worrying about all the commotion. So I told him that I can't handle most situations like everyone else. But he refused to listen. He lectures me about how I'm an irrational dummy who tries to get away from family and that I need to hug EK back. At this point, I lost it. I told him to get lost before I find someone to make him. Because one, his son is a doo-doo head and should leave me the frick alone when I ask him to. And two, EU should understand that I am autistic. I'm not normal and he needs to learn that. I walk away only to later hear he yelled at my mother for letting me speak to him that way. In my last EP post, I said not to mess with my Sicilian mother. So mum chewed him out and two hours later we left. I haven't seen him in a while, but I can say I don't want to again. To think he would say that crap to me still ticks me off. I can't just control how I feel. So cut me some slack. If somebody has a condition like autism, their brain literally can't do things that other people's brains can do. So imagine if this person told somebody in a wheelchair, hey, just man up and start walking. It doesn't work like that. You can't just will yourself to do better. But you shouldn't expect an entitled person to understand that. Submit your story to be read on the channel at voiceyhearstories at gmail.com and join our Voicey Veteran community at r slash voiceyhear. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. Alright Voicey Veterans, I'll see you in the next one.